Will the Fed even pause at its meeting next week? My next guest doesn't think so. Let's bring in David Zervos. He's chief market strategist at Jefferies. It's great to see you today, Dave. And um, let's just start on that very pointed question. Do you think they're going to halt or not? I don't, Kelly. I think they're going to, as we've been talking with our clients, I think they're going to try to compartmentalize financial instability risks uh, with uh, balance sheet tools, dealing with them with balance sheet tools like the new funding facility, like the discount window and the uh, very generous terms that they've put forward on the discount window, and then leave traditional monetary policy, interest rates, and the general process of QT, leave that for the dual mandate for dealing with the inflation and the unemployment trade-off slash risks that they are still very much dealing with. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, you're going to see this very much go along the lines of what happened in the UK uh, with the LDI crisis, where the Bank of England solved the problem with a funding facility-like structure. And uh, and then in, not too, in the not-too-distant future, we're still resuming its, uh, its monetary policy goals uh, on inflation fighting uh, via tightenings or whatever was necessary. But Dave, uh, and let, whatever is necessary. let me ask you the following. They, we've already, so inflation peaked at 9% last June. It's already come down by a third. We have an economy that's clearly slowing. We'll do so even more now. The job market is going to weaken after this all comes through. Uh, The wage growth is going too slow, and it's quite possible that another third of that inflation is going to come out in the next 12 months. Why can't they just wait and see here instead of pressing the pedal when they're seeing the credit system on the brink of seizing up as a result? So I I think it's a... Look, it's a valid argument. I think you could have that argument. You could say, let's wait, let's take some risks uh, with inflation, even though it's still running at 6% on the headline CPI, which is 400 basis points above target. But again, I I think you've you've got this ability now with the balance sheet to to kind of compartmentalize financial instability versus the macro side of the equation. And I think they're going to do that. Um, I, I think you can make that argument, Kelly, and it's not an unreasonable argument. In 1998, for example, when there was a lot of financial instability, the Fed cut three times. I think they do look back on that now and say, I wish we wouldn't have done that. I wish we would have figured out another way to do it because the NASDAQ tripled in the next 18 months and they had a huge bubble on their hands and had to take rates up even higher than they probably would have ever thought. I think we got to six and a half by April of 2000 and then a a crash was uh, upon us. So I I think you've got to be careful here. You've got to You've got to think about what the risks are. And you're absolutely right. We are nearing the end of this tightening. We were probably 25 to 75 basis points away from where we needed to stop, I think, given what's going on. But again, do you want to stop because of this or do you want to kind of just do you know, what you set out to do on the inflation fight and not get into this uh, this hairy debate that I think the Fed will get into if they they slow for financial stability reasons, which is are they are they taking kind of 1970s type risks? Yeah. 